In this second chapter, we would like to show you two examples of location-enabled digital government in two different fields of application. Uh, so to showcase what location-enabled digital government is about, we will present you two case studies. Uh, these case studies are diverse in the sense of our first case or our first uh, example is about a digital building permit. It's about a single, single service, single government service that can be transformed quite strongly, quite intensively uh, by taking advantage of location data and technologies. Our second example is about the provision of mobility services and how location data, location technologies could, could allow to make these different kinds of services more smarter and by transforming an entire ecosystem of services. Let us start with the first example of the digital building permit. Uh, it's in fact a permission that citizens and businesses who want to construct, renovate or demol demolish in their building, they need this permission to make sure that they uh, are allowed by the government to do this work. So in this, pro in this process, uh, the building design proposed by the, um, by the citizens or in fact by his designer is checked against the applicable law and, re law and regulations uh, before approving the construction. Let us first have a closer look at how this process or the key characteristics of this process uh, when it was done under, or when it is done or taking place in a traditional government. In a traditional government, we have we see, for instance, a lot of paperwork that has needs to be prepared, provided to the government, exchange within government, but also exchange between the government, citizens and designer, etc. So a lot of uh, exchange of data, provision of uh, pre preparation of, of input uh, is done on paper. One key characteristic. Uh, for this, we also see that the citizens and or his designers on a regular notice should visit these authorities. So that there are parts of the entire process, a part of the entire service uh, delivery process that cannot be completed online. Again, these visits or sometimes these phone calls to the local authorities or other involved authorities require some time, require some efforts, uh, which makes it not always easy uh, for a citizen to, go to complete this entire procedure. Finally, we also have an element of inconsistencies because the entire procedure of, of actually checking and approving the construction requires some human intervention. Uh, which sometimes mean, means that mistakes are made, but also that different that the same uh, things are sometimes evaluated differently by other people. These are some things we would like to avoid by location enabling this procedure or by location enabling these services. By the use of location data and location uh, uh, technologies, there are some advantages we could realize. To begin, location data, location uh, technologies could allow us to make sure that this, this entire process of, of checking but improving the construction and, and, and uh, granting the building permit could be completely, completely uh, fully online or in a fully digital way. It also allows even to semi-automate some parts of the process. So it means that no longer in certain steps, uh, human intervention is needed. No, uh, the, these steps are done automatically uh, through the use of location data and the right technologies. Finally, it would also allow us that certain data or as much as possible data are reused, also including 3D data. So it means that some data it's no longer strongly reliant on, on, on paper data, on information on, on, on provided by telephone, or on, on information that needs to, be, needs to be provided many different times. Uh, again, by the citizens, no. We see that location enablement is really about reusing as much as possible data, also including, also including 3D uh, location data. Let us have a closer look at the entire process of transformation and interoperability, where we see, in fact, four key, uh, key uh, aspects, four, four key components that, in fact, should be all transformed, but also should, that should be well aligned. There's, in fact, the entire process, there's the regulatory framework, there are the data and technology, but also the people and organizations involved. Let me show you some uh, characteristics that uh, allow us to better understand on one hand the challenge of this transformation, but also the added value of um, working in a location enabled way. To begin, there's a process. Let's make it quite uh, complex because in fact, this process of this one single service uh, already consists of more than 45 different steps. So it means when we are really transforming, we need to make sure that how can we uh, make sure that, how can we simplify this process, but also make sure how can we make sure we have a process that well takes advantage of the available data and technology, but at the same time is in line with the regulatory framework. When talking about the regulatory framework, 
we see there's a framework that not only defines the process itself, but also that the framework this also determines what is the information that needs to be provided and changed. And in the end, what are the regulations that a, a certain building should be uh, in adherence with? So again, here we see a complex regulatory framework that should be well adapted with the process. Now, in terms of data and technology, we, we clearly see, see here the added value of location data and various technologies, which allow that data can be modeled, analyzed, visualized, shared, and integrated to make sure that we realize our benefits of a location-enabled government. Now, talking about the people and organizations, it's important to be aware that it's not only a few people that are involved in this process, but it's a quite intensive process involving many different actors within the public sector, citizens, but also businesses or private actors, such as the designer or also the constructor of the building. So you already see here from this side the challenge of transforming the work of many different actors, but also making sure that the needs and requirements of these uh, different actors are aligned, and that also here uh, we achieve some level of interoperability. Now, this slide uh, well represents the challenge and how, what are the elements that should be brought into line, what are the elements that should be transformed. Um, and why we are doing that, we would, I would like to show you some examples or some evidence from a study done on the process of location enablement of the building permit permission uh, in Sweden, which and this study clearly shows the benefits that this location enabled transformation brought to governments, citizens and architects. Let me show you some of the evidence that they was collected in this study. First, we saw, they see that in, in Sweden, the public service uh, involved in the projects due to the really high level of location enablement, they were able to spend up to 50% much less time on each of these building permits. As a result of that, but also as a result of that, the interaction between different public servants, between different administrations and between the uh, public administrations and the citizens uh, and the architects were going much faster. The entire process now could be, in some cases, could be completed up to 90% faster than before. This was not the case in all municipalities, but there were some municipalities in which this uh, this reduction of the complete time to, uh, for completing the process of up to 90% could be realized. One of the advantages of these uh, two other benefits was the fact that uh, the, the, the fees that the citizen uh, or company uh, who wants to receive a building permit uh, had to pay uh, could be reduced in some cases by 100 euro per permit, which is already, which is also a very interesting uh, added value or advantage for the citizen who not only see, and that's probably the main benefit that he will receive his uh, building permit uh, on a much further, uh, faster notice, but also he has to, he or she has to uh, pay much less for receiving or for completing or for implying, applying for this building permit. Overall, when looking at all these benefits together, the study showed that up to uh, almost 5 million per year or even up to uh, 18.6 million euro per year could be saved only in Sweden when, we, when they would uh, fully uh, work in a location enabled uh, way in their process of um, uh, applying and, and, and granting uh, building uh, permissions. Now the process of the, the example of the building permission showed the, the added value of location enablement of one single service. We also would like to show you one example of a series of services in the domain of mobility and transform, where it's all about traveling people, traveling or moving goods uh, from point A to point B in the most efficient and convenient way. Uh, this is uh, also a, a public service, or this is in fact a series of public services. It's not only about interact, it's not only about providing and receiving information uh, from the government, but it's really about citizens wanting to travel or wanting to move to one place to another. Let us first uh, highlight some key characteristics of this process uh, when it would take place in a traditional way. Uh, one of the a set of processes, let me show them all together. We see on one hand, there's a process of traffic jams. We are all familiar with. There's also some people or, or most of us are a bit reluctant to combine many different uh, transport means because that it's makes it sometimes it's complex because we don't have information on how these different transport means uh, can, can, I should say, can complement each other because of this lack of, uh, lack of information 
uh, some of us are, strong, are pretty reluctant to combine different transport means. And then also relevant, and especially from the government perspective, is the negative or the, 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 uh, the, the societal, the negative societal and environmental impact of uh, our current way of mobility, our current way of transactions. Now, interesting to see here is that location data, location technologies could also be used to support some of these services. Uh, it's about optimizing time, budget, and conform by providing information to citizens on how they could, in the most easy way, in the cheapest way, get from point A to point B. Talking about the seamless or frictionless travel, location data could also show which different, how, what is the best way to combine different transport means, and to also make sure that citizens can, can request or can have access to each of these transport means in an effective and efficient way by integrating each of these services into one, one platform. And then also location data, location technologies could provide information on how, how, how we can promote or how can we make our transport more safe, more sustainability. So we also here, here we see with some uh, examples of applications, examples of location data and maps, uh, how location can contribute uh, to improving uh, mobility services and making these mobility services more smarter. Let me show you one example of a country, Estonia, which is in fact quite advanced with regard to its location enablement of uh, various mobility services. Here, let me show you some of the services they are providing in a location enabled way. It's about a platform, it's about a, an application where they, uh, where they are connecting multiple uh, mobility services into one platform to, to allow citizens and consistents to plan, organize, prepare one single journey. It's also about all, all interactions, all provision of information, all collection of information on cars and on traffic through at one single platform uh, that allows smooth processing of, our, of these transactions, of these applications and of these provision of inquiries. It's also about smart parking, making it easier for drivers to uh, find a place for par to park very quickly. It's also about intelligence border queue management that eliminate the need for physical queues uh, for the truck drivers. Just some examples of applications, selection of ex applications uh, currently existing in, in Estonia, where they strongly make use of location data, location technologies uh, to improve their various types of mobility services to citizens, to businesses, and also to public administration themselves. In terms of, ben of benefits, we see that each of these uh, services provide some significant uh, benefits, but also that the interconnection of these different services provide some added value. Uh, for instance, when talking about when planning uh, in terms of planning trips, purchasing mobility services, in Estonia, in Estonia, citizens can rely on one single information where they can combine uh, the, purchase, the purchase, the finding of information, but also the purchase of tickets for many different mobility services. Just one example of a service supporting, um, supporting many different services citizens need. Uh, looking at the online uh, online platform, we see that it allows that currently more than there are more than 3 million inquiries per month, uh, which results in reduced administrative costs and also much lower overhead. Smart parking, we see that 90% of the paid parking currently taking place in Estonia takes place in a mobile way, which means drivers save time, but also car park, car park operators collect much more revenues. And then finally, uh, looking at the example of the border queue management, we see that there are now uh, annually more than 50 million hours are saved uh, in boarding waiting time for the truckers. So these benefits all show how location, da location data, location technologies by supporting many different types of services can really provide uh, huge benefits to citizens, uh, businesses, but also the government itself. Important example or important element of this uh, set of uh, services in Estonia is affected. It's really about the smart ecosystem of solutions. Ecosystem in the sense that each of these solutions are strongly integrated and linked to each other. Uh, they are interconnected, but also an ecosystem in the sense that it's about many different public, private and research actors, all in the field of intelligent transport, intelligent logistics that are working together to make sure that they optimally take use of location data, location technologies uh, for uh, improving uh, public mobility services. And in the end, realizing benefits to citizens, businesses and government and society as a whole. 
Now, these two examples, different but also similar, show us two different ways. On one hand, they really show the added value of location enablement and the benefits it provides to citizens, businesses, and public administrations. But on the other hand, it also shows the, the difficulty of realizing location enablement, which is not only about using uh, location data and technologies, but also about transforming processes, about transforming the way P uh, organizations used to work and used to collaborate. These are the two key conclusions of this chapter. <laughs>